Hello, welcome to Digital Learning. I'm Connie Colosi, Director of Media, Text, and Digital Learning. And for our episode today, I have my two Lauras with me. <laughs> I have uh, Laura Clark, and Laura is um, one of the Technology Integration Coordinators uh, who works in my uh, department, and Laura Woods, who is the Project Coordinator for Library Media. And just real quick, let's just what is it that you do as a technology integration coordinator? Laura, tell me a bit about your position. Tell I, us who pays for you, too. Oh, I am referendum funded. There's four of us. Um, I am one of the ones that goes out to kind of bridge the gap between technology and the students and the teachers. So when they want to take the technology and use it with their students in their classrooms, I can either teach them at a, online or at a you know, face to face training or actually go and do some side by side with training the kids and the teachers at the same time which works really well because then the kids become the experts and help the teachers learn alongside. All right. Um, Laura, what's your role? Well, I help, man help manage all of the library media centers around the, the district. We have 122 schools, and so those media centers are becoming a more 21st century designed learning hub, and our job is to help them get there. All right. So in our episode today, we are uh, showing a, a, a recent visit that we made to Bel Air Elementary. And uh, Laura Clark was with me on this visit. Um, Laura Woods has been there many times and she knows what's happening there. And we have a really a vibrant uh, media specialist at that school who has taken this idea of maker space and, and run with it. And um, uh, just real briefly, help us understand what maker space is. Makerspace is giving the children the opportunity to be creative. It lets them be what they call tinkers. The kids are taking the information they have and they are making things, creating things, solving problems, and giving these things um, a name and then giving it back to the teachers. And the teachers are seeing that the kids have mastered skills or concepts through what the kids have created. You know, I think most of us from our time in schools and visiting libraries, we have a picture of a library as a place where we all sit very quietly and there's a very stern person behind the desk scolding us if we so much as giggle, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> what we're going to see today doesn't remind me very much mm -hmm. of Not what at I... All. <laughs> Not at all. Not more. So um, Principal Tabitha Griffin has been really innovative and um, visionary in what she wanted to create in her media center. So we're going to uh, start today with a little clip from Ms. Griffin and let her tell us what her vision was. So when I came to Bel Air, we did not have a media specialist, and it was really just a place where we had meetings. People would leave their old stuff in here because it was a space. So my vision for our media center was that it was the hub of the school, that students would come in and they would select books that, that had characters that reflected them, that, um, that made them happy, that, made, that took them on experiences that they may never go on in real life. And I wanted this to be a place where we all came together and grew as a staff, as a community, including our families, our teachers, and our students. And Mrs. Curlman has made that happen. Everyone is clamoring to come into the media center. My students love the makerspace. They come in here. Um, they have to sign up to get into the makerspace, and they come in here for recess, and they are having so much fun experimenting and playing around and growing, and they don't even realize they're learning. They're just having fun. So uh, how does what happens in here support their learning during the school day? Well, even though these are fun activities, it supports their learning in science and mathematics because they're creating and they're doing out-of-the-box things with coding and with robots and they're tinkering and it applies from kindergarten all the way up through fifth grade. We have kindergarten classes that come in here uh, regularly and it's not just uh, what you used to see in the media center where you come in and you get your story read. These students, they're going through and they're creating while they're in, in the media center in our makerspace. What are some ways that other schools around the district have been uh, re-imaging re their space? We have quite a few of the schools that have been given funding, outside funding, and they are literally weeding out 
all the old books or the damaged books, getting rid of all that, and most of the reference books, we have plenty of online references. They don't need to use the hardcovers anymore, but that gives them room. They can pull those shelv the shelving out of there to make room for collaboration stations, for the makerspace areas. You saw the tables on the video that had the white tops. Those are whiteboard tables that the kids can actually write on with dry erase markers and figure out problems. I mean, there are many schools now that are having this happen, and hopefully by the end of 2020, they'll all be done. So Stephanie Curlman is our media specialist yes. here, and uh, we have a clip of her explaining how excited she is about reimaging her space. Well, the furniture is, first of all, it's the, the white board, uh, marker board on top, so that you can write on it. So you can dry erase right on it. So that right there allows collaboration, because you can be sitting there talking and I, take notes, or they can work as a group and write right on the table. That part is really fun. I mean, they find it's simple. It's like holding a whiteboard in your lap, but it's the table, and so it's fun. But they also are, um, the furniture we, we've got is different shapes, so it interlocks, and we can, and it's on wheels. So it's very easy to move it around based on what our needs are at that time. And it moves, I will say, sometimes three and four times a day. Part of the idea behind the makerspace at recess was while they're in here, we can also say, hey, it's time, you know, you have time to check out books while you're in here too. Not, when a class is in here, not every kid's gonna check out a book, but a lot of times a handful, 10 kids will check out a book at that time. Sometimes the teachers will say, when you're in there for your recess makerspace, make sure you grab a book if you need one. And it's really helped with um, you know, circulation and getting the kids to check out books and hopefully getting them to love reading, <laughs> which is ultimately the goal. So um, trying to make it fun ways that they're not expecting, you know, that, oh, hey, they can get a book whenever they want, which then it's their idea, they own it, they want it, they want to read, and that's, that's my goal, is to get them to love it, own it, and, and want to read. So they have this fabulous space, they come in, and uh, now we're about to get to the exciting part, because it's gonna be what they actually do when they're there. Um, we have some kids working on um, something in some clips, and I just want to give a little heads up about what they're going to see. I think it's called Makey Makey. Makey Makey. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and uh, what, what is Makey Makey? The Makey Makeys are kits that um, Stephanie has purchased, and they, are, they involve different parts of the curriculum. This one that she has on the clip is um, with electricity, where they use some Play-Doh, and they connect to a little chip, and then it, they, the kids have to hold hands and complete the circuit and work collaboratively to um, make it the piano play. Or and then right. there's a Pac-Man one as well on there, I think. Okay, let's, uh, let's see, what the, see what that looks like. You're actually seeing our library and makerspace in action. Um, we've kind of tried to make the library the hub with a lot of activity, trying to get the kids in, and one of our ways was um, allowing them in for makerspace, which is a good movement now with allowing the kids to create and design on their own. And so we have different stations, different um, activities, different just things in there for them to utilize when they're in here. This morning um, we had some students in that were using our Makey Makey, which is on the computer where it's a circuit board. And they were learning, you know, they had to have ground and they were playing the piano and they figured out that if they were grounded they could play the keys and that would make the music but then they also learned that if they held hands and continued the circuit the next person could play and so they're learning about science and electricity that way but then I have kids that are using um, just blocks that interlock and they want to build and make their own I don't know tower or sometimes they make a crown that they put on their head out of magnetic building blocks some of them simply want to draw um, they'll come in and they'll, they'll draw and create something just about anything you know a, a drawing that they have thought about so they're learning just any number of skills maybe um, even just things that they've talked about in the classroom and then they come in here and they're like oh my gosh look this is how that works uh, especially magnets, that's an area that they do that a lot because we have all these different magnets and they'll, they'll play with them and push them all around and then they're like, look, these won't go together and 
even first grade, they'll say, wait, they repel. And you're like, yes, they figured something out on their own. I mean, it's play for them, but they're learning. We tried to think outside the box. How could we get the kids in here? And how could we let them have that free play and learn, but not really know they're learning? And one of the things we did was this year, we had to have recess. And we decided that what if we said one day a week, your recess could be in the library? It's free play. You can choose what you want to do. And so we kind of tossed the idea around with the teachers. And they really, they were like, well, let's try it and see. So we did it on a day where they have PE. So they get to go outside and play and have their wiggles out. But then their recess time, they come into the library. It's very unstructured because it's recess. So we let them choose what they want to do. And it's amazing what they'll choose. I, at first, I, I will tell you, at first, we got resistance from the kids. They're like, what? A library for a recess? And now we get, can we go to Makerspace? Is it our Makerspace day? Do we get to come? And the kids really love it. So it was a way to think outside the box, and it's working. So those kids were busy. <laughs> it's a lot of activity. Um, and when I was there, I didn't see anybody that was not engaged in it. Teachers included. Mm -hmm. Teachers included. Mm -hmm. There were some kids that kind of floated from activity to activity. Mm -hmm. um, I had a chance to talk to a couple more, and we'll look at another clip. Tell me what you're doing here. Um, well, this is, this is a, uh, uh, so these it's kind of like a battery, but then you hook the grounding to a little mo remote control that she took out of remote control, and then you press it, and it, um, it connects to the Play-Doh. So what does the Play-Doh do? It makes a sound. Just like but you have to hold hands. And it doesn't work. It, you have to have force on it. And also you got to get the green wire. You have to have force. You have to hold hands. If you don't have this, don't press the ground. The ground. But if you don't do it, then it won't work. But if you touch it, touch it. So if you don't have a ground, it won't work? No. See, I'm holding it. But when he doesn't touch it, he has no sound. How do you play different notes? You press this one's A, this one's B, this one's a D, and that one's C. You're playing Pac-Man. How does it work? We, we just like the play-doh pieces, and then um, we mix the, the Pac-Man move. When you hit the Play-Doh pieces, it makes a Pac-Man move. Because these things are connected to, the, to this. Uh -huh. Who's doing virtual reality? So I, I noticed that you're holding hands. It's because it, the energy is going like past ours. The energy is flowing through you when you connect and hold hands? Yeah. I this well, they have some great science concepts going there, don't they? Yes, they do. So, uh, Makey Makey was just one of the things. We are going to take a look at the rest. We're going to take a short break, and we're going to come back and see what else they were doing. Um, so, stay with us, and we'll be back for more interesting information about Bel Air Elementary and their makerspace. space.